this is Freeland. You see her in press conferences when he gets she gets these tough questions. She's like, um, yeah. Yeah. Um. I don't know what I'm talking about. What were my questions? What were my talking points? I don't remember. Uh, stall, stall, stall. Thanks for the question. All right, time to make some stuff up. Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. Christia Freeland decided to appear on CTV with one of the few anchors that will give liberals a hard time. The topic, the Minister of Finance's weakest in her whole repertoire, finance. Let's take a look. The fall economic statement is out, and now come the questions over whether or not the government delivered on what it set out to achieve. Finance Minister Christia Freeland faces pressure to address affordability and Canada's housing crisis while not adding to the inflation problem in this country. The economic update pegged the deficit for the current fiscal year at about $40 billion, the same as the budget projected. But the deficit over the next few years after that is now bigger than forecast at budget. The cost to pay Canada's debt also rises due to that deficit and higher interest rates, reaching more than $60 billion in 2028. This is someone who's doubled our national debt. He's added more debt than all previous prime ministers combined. We're, next year, we will spend more on debt interest in Canada than we do on health care. There are also some new measures for housing, $15 billion in additional loan funding for rental apartments, but that money won't be available for another two years. Plus, proposed tax measures to crack down on non-compliant short-term rentals and a new Canadian mortgage charter, a codification of rules and expectations banks are expected to follow when working with borrowers, though it's not binding. What the Liberal government has announced is not a budget, obviously. It's not even a mini-budget. It is a micro-budget. It does not meet the urgency of what Canadians are going through. It doesn't really meet their needs. Christian Freeland is Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister. Hi, Minister Freeland. Pleasure to welcome you back to our studio. Great to be with you, Vash. I appreciate you making the time. The funny thing is, is that Freeland was sitting there this whole time while Vashu was basically trashing her budget. Amazing. <laughs> so she's like, oh, uh, hi, Vashu. It's nice to be here. <laughs> so, um, for those that don't know, Vashi is one of the few, few anchors that actually digs um, when she doesn't get an answer that she wants from politicians. So uh, this should be interesting. Canadians are looking at the choice right now of your party and other parties, the opposition namely, knowing that there could be an election in two years or sooner. You have throughout your mandate so far launched some really big transformational spending initiatives that come with big tra uh, price tags, but have had big societal impacts as well. Do you anticipate launching any more of those types of programs in the rest of your mandate? Um, I learned during the NAFTA negotiations, never answer a hypothetical. Um, there is a lot of time between now and the next election. Says you. <laughs> well, says you. And Vashi wasn't asking a hypothetical. <laughs> like, so already we're off to a really, really bad start. She said, do you have any other big initiatives planned? <laughs> and she says, well, uh, don't answer a hypothetical. Okay, so the answer is no. <laughs> that, that's what that is. But I am glad that you point to the big transformational programs that are already underway. Um, one of my favorites is early learning and child care. We announced that in the 21 budget and it is rolling out. And you know, I think it is important for Canadians to recognize that our economic plan is something that is happening every single day. And we, you know, it can be announced in a budget as with childcare in 2021. We are investing in it right now and it's delivering for Canadians with, you know, we now have fees down by 50% across the country. Six provinces and territories have $10 a day childcare. And that is really transforming families' lives. It's making life more affordable for families across the country. And it means a lot of parents, especially mothers, can now go out and work. That helps our economy with labor shortages and it helps families. And, and certainly, I'm not disagreeing with that point. It's actually with that program in mind that I asked the question. That program, something like the Canada Child Benefit, they do come, however, and not to take, not to take away from their effectiveness or their impact with 
very large price tags, right? We're talking in the neighborhood in each of those programs of 10 to $20 billion a year. Child depending care on is 30 billion over, over five, right? Like, that's a lot. It's I a agree. lot of money, right? So, so I, I asked it not necessarily as a hypothetical, but against the backdrop of what you did outline in the fall economic statement, which was two promises where a fiscal anchor is concerned. The first, that you would lower the debt to GDP ratio in 24, 25, and keep it, quote, on a declining track thereafter. The second, that you would get the deficit to GDP ratio below, oh, sorry, uh, below 1% by 26, uh, 27, and keep it there. Does that inherently limit you, though, from launching any kind of program similar to those? So the interesting thing about Vashi in this interview when when all of you are watching this you are tempted to just watch freeland as she's answering but watch vashi because it's very interesting to watch how she approaches interviews um freeland just her style really relies on people to nod when she's talking to smile to practice what they call active listening, meaning engaging with her as she's talking. Vashi sits there with a stoned poker face, like not giving any inclination of what she's thinking. She's just sitting there saying, answer my question. Because Vashi is one of the few journalists left that actually has integrity. Yeah, and I don't care if Vashi does this with the, with the conservatives as well, because she should. A, a, an actual true journalist should be approaching both both parties, all of parties, the same way. No bias, just be hard on all of them. That's what you're supposed to do uh, as a journalist, and that's what the press is supposed to do in a democracy, hold government to account. So um, just pay attention to her as the, as the interview goes on. So I am actually really glad that you put those two questions together because from my perspective, we have a fiscally responsible economic plan because we need to have the capacity to invest in Canadians. We need to have the capacity to invest precisely in things like early learning and childcare. And fiscal responsibility means that those investments are sustainable over the long term. So that's why our economic plan, it is really at its heart about investing in Canadians, investing to ensure that we have an economy that can deliver good jobs, people can count on, that supports them with things like early learning and childcare. And the way that we can continue to do that is by making sure that all of those plans and programs are contain are you know built on this fiscally responsible foundation. A fiscally responsible foundation is not continually to running your budget at a deficit. Because that means you're taking on more and more and more debt. All right? Like, this is, this is silly at this point. So, remember, in a couple of years, as CTV pointed out, we are going to be spending $60 billion a year on interest. That is more than 10% of the budget. That's a problem, everybody. What could you buy with $60 billion? Better health care? better lots of things lots of things but no that's going back to the bankers you know i want to touch on something freeland said early on in the interview which was that having ten dollar a day child care is good for families and good for the economy you guys know how i feel about having to have child care I think families should be able to have the option of whether they would like to stay home with their children and raise them until they're school aged, or if they would like to go to work and have the children in childcare. Canadians do not have that option by and large. And I don't understand how Freeland thinks it's a sign of a good economy when both parents absolutely have to work. Yeah. Like one of the big problems, talk to child psychologists, you know, the ones that aren't biased. They will tell you that having your kids not around their parents for the majority of the time is not a good thing. Not a good thing. And again, we're not here to shame anybody who has to send their children to, to daycare. No, you do what you have to do. But we're saying that in Canada, they've created the economy so that both parents absolutely have to work. Right. It's very rare to have one parent staying at home full time. If you both want to work, 
by all means, we have no problem with that. I applaud you for doing that. The point is, is it should be a choice. You shouldn't have to have to work. That's the problem. And then have to rely on the government to pay for daycare because now mom and dad's salaries are not covering that daycare either. There's a lot of parents that would rather stay home with their kids, but they can't afford to. That's a problem. And, you know, they're saying, oh, well, you know, $10 a day childcare. Well, you know, it used to be that, you know, in order to make a little bit of money, you would have to go get a job. And then because of that, you would have to get childcare. And then you were faced with the option, well, childcare is so expensive that, you know, I might as well just stay home. Well, and that's what happened in our case. So now, now you can't even afford to do that. It doesn't make sense to stay home. You must go out and get a job. So look at how times have changed since Trudeau has been in power. This is a problem. So you have the capacity, let's say, to sustain the programs that, that you have right now. My question is whether you will have the capacity going forward, now having outlined these fiscal anchors. And I'm asking you because what I have noticed in public opinion polling is that a lot of Canadians are saying, what's the, this government's vision for the future? And so if you're going to present big transformational projects that do come with a, a high price tag, I am wondering if this fall economic statement actually limits you from doing so, or maybe you're not so wedded to those two promises. Actually, I really believe our fall economic statement is about ensuring that we can continue to invest in Canadians. Because what I really believe makes things like early learning and childcare possible is that they are built on a sustainable fiscal foundation. Because that means we can keep on doing it year after year after year. And I really believe, Vashi, that the investments that we are making today and those are investments, you're quite right, that are ongoing based on things we launched in previous budgets. Those investments are going to deliver strong, sustainable economic growth that means we can continue to do more things for Canadians going forward. And I'm gonna give you one more specific example, if I may, um, and that is our economic plan about building the industrial economy of today and tomorrow. You saw, I know because you talked to me about this a couple days ago, um, that in the fall economic statement this week, we moved forward on our industrial transition measures, the tax credits, and those are real investments in Canada. They're going to create more jobs, they're going to create more growth, and they're going to mean that our fiscally responsible economic plan means we can continue to sustain the investments we have in place today and make more in the future. What is your level of, of adherence to that concept of fiscal responsibility? And I will invoke the promise that you made back in 2015, your government made, not you specifically, but the, the party that you're a member of, that the deficits would be modest in nature. You have outlined two very specific fiscal anchors. Are you willing to deviate from those in the future or are you wedded to them? Christia Freeland seems to be really intent on saying fiscal responsibility, fiscal responsible foundation as much as she possibly can because she's trying to get that into Canadians heads that the Liberals are fiscally responsible. Well, you know, as Vashi pointed out, how, you know, this isn't sustainable. The fact that your deficit is going up, the fact that your interest payments are going up, if you want to have a balanced budget at some point, then you're going to have to be absorbing a huge amount of that budget as an interest payment. And what Vashi is saying is that is going to limit you from spending money on these programs. The only other alternative is you continue to run at an incredible deficit. And this business about her saying, Freeland saying, oh, well, you know, we're making these investments in Canadians and, and that's that, you know, because that is going to give us a fiscally responsible budget. This sounds like the budget will balance itself. Well, and we need to keep in mind, the government does not have its own money to invest. They are taking tax money from Canadians. And this is why they want all of the women and mothers to work. Because what happens when people work? They get paid. And what happens when you get paid? You pay taxes. You get paid. You, you pay taxes. So... This is, seems like it's a game that's being revealed 
that they want every single mother and parent out there to be working so that they are actually funding all of these measures that the Liberals are trying to put in. Well, and I've said it before, I, I can't describe how sad I feel when I see it on my local Facebook mom groups where moms are saying, I need a second job. I need to go out after my husband is home from work with the kids. I need either a work from home job or I need a job that I can go to at night while he's home with the kids. It, it's tragic. Two jobs, two full-time jobs is not enough anymore. And when seniors have to come out of retirement to supplement their pension because they can't afford to eat and they can't afford to heat themselves, they can't afford to pay their rent or their mortgage or any of their housing costs, that's a problem. It's all part of the plan. They'll have to pay taxes too. Right. So now that's more, that's more taxes to service the debt so they can quote unquote keep investing. And now she's talking about industrial transformation. What are you talking about? Oh, right. The transformation to a green economy. This is another buzzword. What does that even mean? They have no idea. Um, that, I, I'm glad you asked that question. And actually that promise in 2015, um, for me is very much a, a guiding impulse and philosophy of this fall economic statement. Um, I still remember standing up with the future Prime Minister, then the leader of our party. Um, I think we were in Oakville. I think Paul Martin was there. Um, and the Prime Minister outlined, or the future Prime Minister outlined this plan of investing in Canada and Canadians, investing in infrastructure, and running modest deficits. And that's a plan that I think you see carried through in this fall economic statement. That's what we believe in, that's what we're doing. And truly, the key is we need to invest in Canadians. We know we need that. We need to invest in housing. People need that. We need to invest in childcare. People need that. We need to invest in this industrial transformation. People, we need that for jobs and for the future. And the way we ensure that we can deliver that is, and that we can deliver it not just today, but year after year, do it in a fiscally responsible way. And so am I to take from that that you would characterize, for example, this year's deficit at $40 billion or the next two years, which are about 10 to $12 billion higher than anticipated at budget as modest? And can you understand how Canadians might greet that with some skepticism, given your government's track record hasn't always been restrained. And I'll provide you with a few examples and, and offer you the opportunity to respond. $50 million on an uh, app, a RiveCan that never worked. The federal public services employment growth rate is three times greater than the population growth rate. Uh, spending on contracting has increased by more than- Oh my God, I gotta stop wow. it. <laughs> Good job, Vashi. She's amazing. <laughs> Freeland looks like she is a 16-year-old girl arriving to class, forgot there was a test, and she's panicking. <laughs> she's trying to like cram <laughs> as the teacher is handing out the test. This is what she looks like she's doing. What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> she's like, oh, crap. I wasn't prepared for this. Oh, my God. This is amazing. This is why I like Vashi, everybody. And I want her to do this with the conservatives, too. By all means, hold them to account because the government and politicians must be able to answer these tough questions. Like, yeah, are you really saying that $40 billion in deficit, that's modest? Is Seriously? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> and by the way, you, you did this $50 million arrive, Canada, and, and if you heard Vashi, she said, it didn't work. <laughs> so, good for her. Amazing. A third since just 2017. Yeah, um, truly thank you for the question, because that's, that's a stalling tactic. We know that from Mindone. That's a total stalling tactic. And did you see her face? She's like, oh, this freaking, oh. you can tell that's what she was thinking. I'm never coming on this TV station again. And then, and then. This is this is Freeland. You see her in press conferences when he gets she gets these tough questions. She's like, um, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. What were my questions? What were my talking points? I don't remember. Uh, stall, stall, stall. Thanks for the question. All right, time to make some stuff up. I believe from all the conversations I have across the country that Canadians 
understand now is a time we need to invest. I find people are particularly focused on investments in housing. I find certainly parents and grandparents very focused on child care. I think but people that's are different than the examples I laid out with respect. I, I, I'm going to I'm going to get to those. I, I promise. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Vashi's on fire. Like, no, that's not answering my question. And, and, and this is the thing. I, I wasn't joking when, when I was paraphrasing for Freeland saying, now I'm going to make some stuff up. So she was hoping to go on this complete tangent. And she's learned this from Trudeau, by the way. When Trudeau gets a question that he doesn't want to answer, he just starts talk, talking about something else. And most reporters just let him do it and until he like finishes and smiles at them and says, okay, you can ask your next question. No, Vashi says, no, 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 that's, that's not my question. Oh, well, yeah, 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 no, I'm going to get to that, I promise. Yeah, well, you better. Um, people are really aware that we need to invest in the industrial transformation of our country. And I think people really want to know that we're doing it in a fiscally responsible way. I think that's kind of the base setting of Canadians. And I agree with that. And so, and I think it can be hard for people to judge, you know, is it fiscally responsible or isn't it? We're here in Ottawa, I think the House of Commons is behind us. There are lots of partisan talking points flying around. And so what I would say, you know, to you, but even more to people listening to us and watching us, um, I get that you don't want me to grade my own homework. And I get that hearing me say, government is fiscally responsible, you want some proof points. So I'll give you two quick proof points. The first one is Canada's debt and Canada's deficit right now, today, are the lowest in the G7. That is significant. Second thing, and this speaks to, I don't believe we should grade our own homework. I don't expect you to want us to grade our own homework. There is someone out there whose job it is to give us a grade and that is quite literally the ratings agencies. And the grade that the ratings agencies are giving Canada right now, today, is the highest grade possible, a AAA credit rating. And but that just because, is because I have a good credit rating from my bank, does that mean that I should increase the size of, you know, the staff that I have at my workplace or, you know, at a, at a, at a pace faster than is needed, for example, in the public service? I mean, you've admitted to that pace perhaps being too fast and that the cuts that you're now looking to make over the next five years are all focused on that. 100% Vashi. And this is the thing that a lot of people that are actually paying attention to politics right now are seeing through Freeland, straight through. Because she's saying this crap over and over again and people are like, so what? That doesn't mean anything. Just because you have a AAA credit rating, just, just because you have a great credit rating at home, doesn't mean you're spending your money on good things. There's some people with good credit ratings and they buy stupid things. And as Vashi said, just because I have a good credit rating as a business, does that mean I should start hiring staff like crazy? And to her last point, yeah, the government has realized we're doing this too fast and the deficit is too big. So we have to cut back $15 billion over a couple of years. That's what Anita Anand put in. So they realized, crap, we're not going to have enough money for stuff. So they want to, quote unquote, repurpose that $15 billion. Well, and as the saying goes, you can't live inside a AAA credit rating. You can't eat a AAA credit rating. But apparently you can spend that $15 billion you're going to save over 15 years on an auto plant. The rating that the agencies give us is based on where we are today and it's based on what they think is sustainable going forward. So they're looking at two things. They're looking at how strong is the economy and is it growing? So they understand you need to make investments to be sure you have growth. And what they also think about is, is the rate of investments in line with the expected rate of growth, with the return on those investments. That's what they're expecting of us. I think broadly that's what Canadians expect of us. And that is what we are absolutely committed to delivering. That's what we're doing. I, I Sorry, I don't buy that, Freeland. Um, so one thing she said that was correct is the AAA credit rating is based on where they are today and what they could 
potentially borrow today. That's correct. That's what everyone's credit rating is based on. What I don't buy is when she said, and they understand, you know, it also means, you know, what's sustainable down the road? No, it doesn't. I have a AAA credit rating. Does that mean I can go out and buy a $3 million house tomorrow and they're going to say, yeah, that, 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 that makes sense. No, because my credit is then going to be reevaluated. And then they're going to say, hey, that's probably not a good idea to buy a $3 million house. It depends on what you're going to buy. And your credit rating is your ability to A, make your interest payments, and B, be in a position where you can reasonably pay down your debt. The Canadian government could pay down this debt. What have they chosen to do? Spend, spend more. money in on, on other programs. Spend, spend, spend. Yeah. And then they turn around and say, oh, the conservatives just want to cut all the stuff. Well, yeah. Because you guys are starting to cut stuff. That's the thing. These guys spent so much of of our money that they realized, oh, crap, this is not sustainable. We have to start our own cuts. But they're not talking about the cuts they're making. Well, because they see $60 billion in interest in two years. That's $20 billion more than what we're paying this year. Hmm. Well, I'm happy that Vashi could give Freeland a tongue lashing. Yeah, and and I'm happy that she humbled her. Like, Freeland, I'm sorry. The way she speaks about finances is like she read the back of a book cover for a book report. That's the impression I get from her knowledge of finance. All you hear from her is AAA credit rating, debt to GDP ratio, and lowest deficit in the G7. We have the smallest population of the G7. Of course we have the lowest deficit. If we didn't, that would be even worse. So this is the current Minister of Finance, everybody, and Deputy Prime Minister. Hopefully, not for much longer. <laughs> <laughs>